I've been getting a lot of questions recently with regard to timing. When should you build a PC? And the answer to that is always changing. It's kind of why this question is so annoying. Should you wait for the next big release? Should you buy used now and upgrade later? Will prices drop significantly for certain parts within the next two or three months? So look, as often as I hear this question, and I get this question all the time, I totally get it, right? You wanna maximize your utility and stretch your dollar as far as it'll go. So today we'll analyze computer prices on a component by component basis to help you answer the question for yourself. Let's start with CPUs. On Intel's side, things are a bit pricey right now. I've got a video discussing this in detail right here, but in a nutshell, current chipsets and CPUs are being produced from the same process. A supply shortage almost always forces prices upward, which is why even the 8700K pre-refresh jumped in MSRP by roughly 10%. If you're dead set on an Intel upgrade path for gaming superiority and program dependency, stick with the blue team. I can't really convince you otherwise. But if you prefer the value emphasis, the better solution in my opinion is AMD. For well under 200 bucks, the Ryzen 5 2600 is a killer solution for multitaskers and gamers alike. Rendering, CAD, streaming, Photoshop, it can all be done quite simply with a 6-core 12-thread beast like this at around 4 gigahertz. That's, you know, that's a low conservative overclock. XMP stability has vastly improved this time around as well, so if you've got yourself a fast kit of RAM, you should consider the second gen 12 nanometer stuff. But what about future releases? Should you wait for either Intel or AMD to release something new before you buy? This is also a question I get a lot. Well, if you're watching this at any point in 2018, the answer, in my opinion, should be no. We don't expect true Zen 2 architecture at 7 nanometers until mid-2019. On the other side, Intel's been struggling with its 10 nanometer process for quite some time, partly explaining their current supply shortage. Don't expect anything in this realm until later in 2019. We'll be left with the 9th gen stuff for quite some time. So both the desktop CPU manufacturers won't release anything truly groundbreaking for what we expect will be another year or two. If you can wait that long, so be it. But if you want something soon, it makes sense to buy now. And again, in my opinion, the Ryzen 5 2600 is the best value currently on the market. Motherboards really aren't called into question too much with respect to timing, so we'll gloss over this one. Most Ryzen CPUs run perfectly fine on B350 or B450 chipsets. Just mind the BIOS updates if you're uh, using a newer board on an older CPU. More on that in this video right here. As for Intel, it's pretty straightforward as well. If you don't want to overclock, you have a non-K SKU, then buy the cheaper boards. But if you do have a K SKU and you want to overclock, it, you know, you're kind of forced to buy the Z series chipsets. Now let's move over to RAM. This one's tricky. Prices have been on the decline as of late, but Really, only barely. I mean, up until late 2017, prices were on the rise. A base 2133 MHz DDR4 kit in a 4x4 arrangement used to cost 75 bucks. Boy, what we do for prices like that today. Currently, that same kit costs around 150 bucks, nearly double what it should cost on paper. Hynix, Micron, and Samsung were sued multiple times by multiple countries uh, over antitrust violations, and long story short, things take a while in court, especially big court cases like this. So we don't expect prices to return to normal for several months, if not years. So if RAM was the one thing you were waiting on before building your next computer, don't get your hopes up. My advice is to bite the bullet. Buy a cheaper 16 gig kit while you can or find something in the used market for slightly less. Either way, there's really no avoiding this one. It's the price we pay, uh, literally, when big businesses resort to shady and illegal tactics. Now, how about those graphics cards? Depending on your desired resolution, in-game settings, and budget, the market is, well, it's okay. Nothing special here unless you plan on buying used, and I have videos on that as well. As for the new stuff, your sweet spot is still probably around GTX 1070 or 1080 territory. 1060s will do just fine, but you're still paying a bit of a premium with respect to AMD rivals. So in my opinion, the RX 580 is the better buy from a value perspective. You just gotta be willing to put up with Radeon software. And if you've only ever used GeForce Experience, you may wanna stick with the green team just for GeForce's sake. It's, it's assuming you use GeForce experience. It's just a preference thing. Turing offerings are still quite expensive in my opinion, but if you insist on the latest tech, the cheaper 2070s at around 500 USD look rather promising. 2080s are often more expensive than their nearly identical performing 1080 Ti counterparts, and 2080 Ti's are priced like titans. But I mean, if you're willing to sink your teeth into either of those cards, you probably weren't interested in this topic anyway because value isn't probably your top concern, and that's totally your choice. I implore you to reallocate funds if possible in your budget 
toward the best graphics card possible though, especially if you're gonna emphasize gaming. GT 1030s aren't gonna cut it for the average gamer and IGPs are absolute last resorts, even the 22 and 2400Gs, just my take there. Cases, coolers, and power supplies aren't typically topics of concern for budget builders. We did see a small bump in power supply prices during the mining craze, but that event was rather isolated and was quickly corrected. You can find efficient 5 and 600 watt power supplies, good for a majority of gamers with a single CPU GPU config for well under 100 USD. Now I've linked a few uh, that I've used actually in the past below. That tends to be the, the topic that people are most confused about. How much you know wattage do I need for my system? But typically five to 600 watts is the sweet spot. Now the last thing I wanna to touch on is storage. This category jumped in price uh, across the board actually around September of 2017, but it didn't last as long as the RAM surge, despite having similar suppliers. We actually see a correction at around September of 2018, see those dips there? And this is about where we should expect things to be in a normal market. Simply put, if you were put off by storage prices in general, which is totally you know, justified, at least it would have been a year ago, they shouldn't be an excuse to not build in the present. So there are certainly variables at play here, and I've only addressed a handful of them, but the only thing costing significantly more more than it should ultimately is RAM. So if you're willing to pay an additional 80 to 100 bucks more for your average 16 gig kit of say Corsair Dom Platts, then in my opinion, you'll be able to navigate the waters elsewhere and find great deals. Yes, even on those graphics cards. So should you buy a PC right now? Yeah, I, whoops. I actually think that there's enough in the market telling you to buy that it would be a sin not to. And that's a good thing. Prices will, however, continue to fall as they always do for current gen hardware. So in theory, the longer you wait, the more you save. But does a 20, 40 or $60 premium justify having a computer today with which to game and create? Yes, that's my take. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You guys know what to do. Click that red subscribe button, become a member if you wanna be fancy, and I'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.